فجرا جئت بعد العسر يسرا ربنا أعلاك قدرا يا إمام الأنبياء أنت في الوجدان حي أنت للعينين ضي أنت عند الحب ري أنت هاد وصف السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Know Your Charity My name is Faraz But I would like to thank you the viewer for staying with us now We are looking ahead to Africa Muslims Agency's live pledge line that will be happening, of course, on Friday, the 14th of June, as we, of course, look ahead to the Mubarak Day of Arafah. And joining me is no stranger to Hilal TV. I'd like to welcome Hafez Hassan Junara. Hafez Hassan, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah always for joining us. Shukran Faraj, shukran for having us on Hilal uh, TV and uh, especially on these auspicious days. Mm. Uh, pleasure being here with you. I mean, to my, I mean, uh, Hafiz Hassan, let's start off, of course, with the uh, borehole water projects that are happening. I want to touch with Malawi because uh, obviously, you know, it's in a, a place which is dear to Africa Muslims Agency. Talk to us about the progress that is happening there right now. Alhamdulillah, you know, um, in talks, we talk about empowerment. You, you mentioned it's close to the hearts of Africa Muslims Agency. One of the first offices of Africa Muslims Agency was opened in Malawi in the late 1970s. And so we have a commitment to the, to the country and to the people of Malawi to grow and the communities. You know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, Hamla, you've built over 30,000 water wells and boreholes in Africa. Surely Malawi as a country should be saturated. Mm. Malawi alone uh, has 55,000 villages, mm. uh, a vast number of areas, uh, villages, remote areas that do not have access to basic necessities. Mm. Uh, and over the last few months, we had something called the hunger season. Uh, and a, a cholera, a couple of the cholera outbreak already with a challenge situation where families have to walk kilometers in search of food, and, uh, sorry, in search of water. And it hampers the day to day uh, uh, living. And so we always in Africa, Muslims, want to empower these villages beyond, to, beyond the day. So in the days and the weeks and the months and the years to come, they, they're able to be self-sustaining. And we know too well in Africa that families live and from the land. They eat from what they grow and they eat from the livestock and they drink from the livestock. And without the basic necessity of water, they are able to harvest their crops, unable to nourish their livestock and unable to live off the land, which makes it very difficult. Mm -hmm. So as an organization, we have a massive drive in Malawi to build water wells. One is you bring the obvious benefit of water, but also you empower communities and Allah looks for reasons to benefit humanity. And this beautiful process of, of, of humanity, the person who's giving benefits, the person that's receiving his benefits, and his reward for all. The, the reach to, to <coughs> these villages in Malawi, I mean, we see the videos that, of course, uh, uh, the interviews that you did during the month of Ramadan, where, you know, you're going to the deep rural areas of Africa Muslims Agency. How has that relationship been developed between AMA and these communities within Malawi? Uh, it's a beautiful scene mm. for us. You know, uh, inshallah, uh, someday you, 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 you're able to join us inshallah. and uh, come to the villages. And, you know, it reminds me of my, uh, and I was just sharing the story with, mm. with someone, I think, yesterday, um, about one of my first trips into Africa. Mm. And I was with uh, our former founder of the organization, Allah Yarham Allah Fal, Khabar Noor, uh, in one of the remote villages in uh, Kenya. And... Um, yeah, I was with the CEO, the founder mm. of the organization, global organization. One of my, is a youngster, you know, just out of school, um, uh, going with, uh, is an honor, first mm. of all, spending time with this humanitarian colossal figure mm. uh, in the field and, and you know, a uh, world-renowned individual and Dr. Abdurrahman Sumait, and we go into the village in Africa and the reception you get where the ordinary layman, so to mm. speak, with all due respect to the people in the village, know him by name, mm. the cheer that they give him, and the, and, 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 and the reception is not one of him being somebody who's this, this out-of-reach person, mm. but the person of one of us. And that's the ethos of African Muslims mm. Agency over the last 37 years. When we go to a village, to a camp, it's we are one of each other. Mm. We, are, we are brothers. It's not we are here to give you or to bring benefit. Yes, Alhamdulillah, through the process of humanity, there's a donor, there's an implementing organization, there's people on the ground, and there's people who are benefiting. 
but it's we are together. And I remember sp uh, go and seeing this 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 moment of, you know, uh, just knowing him, him knowing the people, uh, and just being mm. with the people sure. taught me a lesson that day. And since that day, Alhamdulillah, for myself, but I know it's the ethos of the organization, whenever we're building this water world in the remote villages you talk about in Malawi or Mozambique, wherever we're building, it's about being with the people. When you go build a water well, it's a water well, but how else can we benefit this village? You take it like your own. And we always go with this knowledge that you should want for your Muslim brother or sister that which you would want for yourself. We think when we go into a village, if our families were staying in this village, if our children uh, uh, and extended families were staying here, well, how would you want them to benefit in that, in the, in the, with regards to that scenario? And so do that project or that uh, campaign in a manner that you would be receiving it, in a manner that you are on the other end receiving it, alhamdulillah. So we go, always go with that, with, with that kind of thinking in anything that we do, but also make, ensuring that the donors near is fulfilled. And coming back to my earlier point of how Allah looks for reasons to benefit us. One is the donor who's giving, the person who's receiving, the people in the middle who are implementing and, and, and executing and, and doing the homework and the feasibility studies, but also the niyyah that we make for someone who's not even living. But I think about this, you make a niyyah, you do a water well for somebody who's passed away. They've passed on, they don't even know you're doing for them, but they're getting a reward. And this is the beauty of Islam. Whenever we go to the field, this is the beauty of Islam where everybody benefits. Mm. One is the actual benefit of water, in this case, we're talking water wells, but then the benefit of reward, of barakah, of blessings in this world covered in the next. Ameen, um, Ameen. Another uh, country that uh, AMA is really involved in is Afghanistan. Years of uh, war, years of poverty. It still exists, the poverty, the famine, the, <coughs> the, the deep psychosocial mm. issues that are there. Talk to us about the way AMA has tried to improve the lives of the citizens of Afghanistan. Brothers, Alhamdulillah, I had the opportunity of going there many a time. We have an office there, we have a permanent base, we have teams working every single day in Afghanistan, in various provinces. And another country I can, I've come to love. The people have come to know, I've come to love, I've come to stay with her. Uh, and I look, always look forward to going back there every year uh, to meet with the team and also just to go into the mountains of Afghanistan and to the most rural villages and to see how people are living you know, we say there's villages that perhaps look like, that remind you or, or, or gives you the perception of what the villages were like back in the Sahaba time. That's how mm. back they are in terms of the mud homes, but a beautiful place mm. to see. In terms of the mountain and then just the valleys and these mm. mud homes with huge wooden doors. And in there you've got your mud structured homes and you, you kind of picture yourself, okay, is this how people used to live back in the day? But yes, a country that's been affected by four decades of conflict. A country that's reeling from war after war after war. As a result, many young men are either physically challenged or lost, or lost their lives. And so uh, many homes, you find widow-led homes with orphan children by the hundreds for us. And that's sad, you know, when you go to the villages or you go to the cities, it's widow-led homes and it's orphan children. And the kids as young as six, seven are walking streets uh, to try to do something, to bring some means at home. So they're not getting a chance to education. The ladies have to do some domestic chores or go work, you know, as, as, as clean as in different homes and get paid with, with leftover mm -hmm. bread or uh, sometimes don't get paid. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they put in a vulnerable space when they have to come pay for the rent for the little space they're staying in or putting food on the table. So many mothers we met for us, so many children we met where they have to really go beyond the norm and and into a vulnerable situation to provide for their families. We talk about water, and today we're focusing on water wells and bowls. In Afghanistan, I've seen, I've witnessed, I've traversed the mountains, the villages, the sewage is all over, where families, or uh, the elderly have to go and take the surface, water, water collects, it's dirty. Whether it's collected through the sewage, mm -hmm. or it's just through the waste. And they take the surface water of that, or a dirty river stream, they take that in a jerry can, they take that home, they boil it and use it for their yeah. consumption. How is it right that we allow such a situation in today's day and age with all our technology? Alhamdulillah, when I came in, the brother offered me water. He asked me, room temperature or cold? Yeah, you know? the privilege is there. Sparkling or still. Yeah. Yes. You know, you have yeah. that. Alhamdulillah, Allah give us more. But people are still living in a day and age where they're taking the surface water of waste and utilizing that for their, their consumption. In Ramadan, people are using it to break their fast. Mm -hmm. Now I asked that, 
since we know that situation is brought to the fore, it's brought to our attention, what can we do? We sponsor water well, a borehole or towards that. And we change the dynamic of that village or that. And, you, and one is you, you bring the obvious benefit of clean drinking water. Yes. But Allah knows when that person sips that water. Allah knows what you've done. Yeah. You, the, you, the person that donated any amount, whatever it is. And you bring that relief to that person. And uh, the reward, we know one of the best forms of charity mm. for somebody who's loving and who's passed away is to do a water well. Mm. A Sahabi came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Oh Prophet of Allah, my mom has passed away. Yeah. What does the Prophet ﷺ advise as the best form of charity so that she may receive divine rewards or endless uh, uh, rewards? And the Prophet ﷺ said, dig a well in her name. And as the, as from this hadith, we know that it is best to do, water is the best form of charity. And why not in these blessed days of the year, mm. Zil Hijjah? Definitely. Uh, and so we do this to bring benefit to people on the ground. In Afghanistan, like we spoke about, to eliminate the people from drinking wastewater. Mm. But also Allah looks for reasons to benefit humanity. Alhamdulillah. After the break, I'll continue my conversation with Hafiz Hassan Chunara. We're going to be focusing this time on Gaza. Do stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Know Your Charity, Hafiz Hassan. Let's obviously touch on uh, Gaza. Uh, obviously, there's been a ceasefire resolution, but none of that really helps the residents of Gaza. We've seen what happened over the weekend at the Nusayrat refugee camp. We saw two weeks ago in another refugee camp, uh, and each and every day, whether they're in Rafa, whether they're in the north, the south, Deir al-Bala, uh, Gaza City, there's continuous bombing that is happening. Uh, how is Africa Muslims Agency trying to really assist while you've still got all of this bombardment happening in this genocide? For us, it's a very sad situation. If perhaps 10 months ago you mentioned to somebody that be a conflict of this nature, mm. where very limited intervention uh, would take place, you'd say, no, no, not possible. Mm. It can never be. It can never happen. Surely somebody by now would intervene. You talk about a ceasefire and um, <coughs> you have your stance, I have my stance, and uh, there's been many of that that has come around mm. over the last few months. The end result is people are suffering. Mm. You spoke about a few names that you mentioned about mm. different camps. It's been going on for months. And um, people are suffering for us. People have lost their lives. The figures that you see on, 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 on around the world in, in media houses, I, my personal opinion is an understatement. It's, mm. under, it's, it's, not, it's not the actual figures. There are a lot more people that are mm. suffering. A lot more people have lost their lives. Thousands of homes have been demolished. Mm. And people literally staying out in the open, shafted from one place to the next. And so right now in Gaza, yes, amongst the conflicts, amongst the challenges, um, yes, we are affected. Uh, it's not to say that uh, you know, in humanitarian organizations have a safe zone or a safe house or safe warehouse or safe depot. No, we've seen the safe houses being de de demolished. Um, places that are not supposed to be attacked were attacked. So organizations likewise, we've lost, we have staff, we have team members who've lost family members, who've lost their homes as well. Uh, but every day, alhamdulillah, the, 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 the resilience of the people from Gaza is to serve humanity. And you see it every single day. And I know you obviously you interact with people on the ground every day. They talk about serving the next person, even mm. though in their own situation, they have very little. And so likewise, Ahmed, the AMA teams on the ground covering five areas mm. uh, on different levels. You have the mass feeding of uh, lentil soups. You have the food packs that you give to the camps, to families, identified families. Um, water, obviously, is another one that water we distribute. Uh, and then medical support amongst other, uh, 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 other items that we are assisting families in Gaza. Uh, this is ongoing as we speak. The teams over the last two weeks, it was very tense. Uh, for a week or so, you know, the teams were, were at reassess. Uh, but now, alhamdulillah, they're back in action and, 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 and the work is underway. And people are benefiting. But we need the support of, of the donors to mm -hmm. donate. Donate in, in, with, 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 with the thinking of... Mm -hmm. There's no lack mentality. It's not to say if I give my hundred rand, it's the only hundred rand in my pocket, you know, I won't have for myself. Allah guarantees he'll give you more. Mm. And the people, Allah knows, and you and I know that people in Gaza are in absolute need. We use the word dire so many times, you know, mm. this kind of work when you go sure. to a civil strife situation, or you go to a humanitarian situation, the situation is dire. We talk about Gaza, dire is an understatement. 
Mm. People are in absolute need, my brothers and sisters. They need your assistance, not even for you to think about, but now, immediately. Alhamdulillah, the African Muslims Agency has teams whereby you're able to donate today. It's actioned immediately. There's no still a process to happen of, uh, you know, trying to get a team mm. to uh, Palestine or Gaza to do something. No, Alhamdulillah, we action it immediately and people are able to benefit immediately. Afiz Hassan, I want to go back to the water, you know, the water wells and the boreholes. Uh, you know, what has made Africa Muslims Agency so unique in bringing innovative ideas into introducing these water holes and boreholes to places where, you know, listen, it was absolutely impossible for it to occur? Alhamdulillah, uh, Faraz, uh, what the building and digging mm. of water wells and boreholes is a specialty of Africa Muslims mm. Agency. It's a, it's a, we have a dedicated department that only deals with this. From the very beginning, right to the end, what I mean from the beginning, we identify areas. So mm. when we identify areas, it's not just about a water well, but how can we develop this village? How can we grow this village beyond the water well? Perhaps it needs a, you know, a agriculture project. Perhaps it needs a massage, a masjid. Perhaps it needs some homes, mm. uh, madrasa classes, school, maternity clinic, whatever it is. We always go in with how can we empower a village beyond just a project? Mm. So we get connected to the village. Uh, you know, for 37 years, Alhamdulillah, we've been doing this in different remote villages. By now, the teams have trained new teams that have come on, uh, and the seniors understand uh, the purpose of it's not just going to build a water well. Here's your water well, you hand it over to the chief and leave. No, we get connected. So, for example, what here, Qurbani, we will be doing it in the villages that we've been building massage and water wells for the last 37 years. We have a relationship and a connection to these villages in Africa since inception that we will continue working to uplift the community, not to make them dependent, but to further enhance the, the new people that have come along in these villages, to grow them, to teach them about agriculture, self-sustaining, farming, etc. And so you talk about how, how does it, what makes AMA unique in going to these villages. I suppose the experience for 37 years, but the mindset again for us about it's not just going to dig a water well. If a donor who's built a water well 15 years ago, 20 years ago, mm. and perhaps a family member or a youngster or a son or grandchild has come and say, you know, Papa did a water well so many years ago, so many years ago, can we do a report back? We're able to do that because we have teams from there who reside there, sure. who, man, who, who maintain the projects, but also able to do a study to say, okay, yes, here's an updated photo of your water well or video of it. Alhamdulillah, uh, still running. Uh, maybe it needs some maintenance, like any home would need maintenance. There are now so many more families in this village. This village has now grown. And we're able to provide that mm -hmm. feedback because we have permanent teams who do this on a daily basis. We specialize in water wells and bowls and massage it in Africa, especially in the remote areas. And let me give an example of a remote area. Just to give, if you, go, if you talk about Mozambique where we work, you go from Mapu, if you go from here to Maputo, it's about an hour flight. Maputo, you fly in further north to Kilimani. Mm -hmm. um, that's another... Uh, our 15 minute flight and then you drive out 12 hours from Kilimani into the bush you get to a point where your 4x4 four four cannot go any longer you get into a motorbike then the motorbike cannot go, go any longer you get into a bicycle and then you start walking and then you get to some of these villages mm -hmm. that's how remote some of these villages you have to go via canoe okay how are we getting our sheep we transport it via canoe yes. how are we taking cement we take oh, it yeah. via canoe yeah. we put it in the back of a bicycle or guys carry manually and I witnessed it I was in Mozambique last year and we, we, had to, we came to a place where the 4x4 four four couldn't go. Go out the 4x4, four four, took our belongings, yeah. sleeping bag, whatever we took, you know, we are not used to the place, mm -hmm. so we took all our refreshments, whatever, <clears throat> crossed the makeshift bridge, and then we walked across mm -hmm. the river, and then we walked uh, for kilometers in like this remote village. And you came in Hamla, beautiful center. Now mm -hmm. I'm thinking, here's a center Hamla that we built. How did the guys bring the building material? Yeah. So I asked them, well, I mean, this, this is quite, I mean, we walked to carry things here. Yeah. They say, brother, there's a need on the ground. We will be there. We'll make sure it happens. Yes. And this beautiful center. And we were doing Qurbani there. And, and you know, and alhamdulillah, we were doing a program and a project. And many other mm. borehole was there. Water well was there in the nearby villages. I witnessed a water well for us. It was built in 1992, mm. nearby where we were staying yes. in this masjid. And I said, okay, let's go see the other projects in, the, in, this, in this area. And so we went. And we came across a water well donated by one of the South African donors built in 1992. Mm. And yes, it's, the water is a bit, yeah. you know, a bit lower now, but people will still benefit. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now you think of the reward. Years on, yeah. You think of the reward, the near that was made, mm. was made for somebody perhaps that passed on, that was still benefiting as they lay in the yes. cover, 
they were getting rewards for this. Alhamdulillah. Hafiz Hassan, we've just got one more question to put in. Uh, this Friday, of course, the pledge is happening here on Hilal TV. What can our viewers pledge towards? I've sat up with why. Yeah. We talk about the reward yes. this person is receiving after 30 or 32 years. Mm. Imagine the benefit you can bring to our loved one by sponsoring a whatever mm. for 16,500. It's not about 16,500. It's eternity reward that will benefit you in this World Cup or in the next. Alhamdulillah. Friday night, 14th of, uh, Friday evening, 14th of June, 8 p.m., 8 to 11 p.m., Arafah Pledge, the eve of Arafah Pledge. We think about the Zamzam well. And the effort Hajar al Salam made running from Safa to Marwa. Sure. And, um, and, 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 and Allah granted this well and made it such that this well is still running up into where millions have benefited. Imagine a water well that you build that brings the benefit to people in Africa. And for the rest of your life, and when you pass on, you're getting that reward. As long as people are consuming that. A similar situation. So we, people in, in Mecca right now, millions of people benefiting. Take that example, and we can do a similar thing by donating towards water wells and boreholes in, uh, in Africa and Afghanistan and benefit people on the ground. And uh, you know, also Allah will give us that reward for those who have passed on, for those that are loving, for barakah, for health, for shifa. Friday, 14th of June, 8 to 11 p.m., uh, Arafah Pledge. Call in, send a message around, get your friends, family, uh, colleagues together and create links and donate towards one or, or towards many because there's a need on the ground. It, that's why we're doing this pledge, because it's a massive need and we need your support to call in and pledge. Hafiz Hassan, unfortunately time has come to an end, uh, but always a pleasure having you on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to grant you and Africa Muslims Agency the ability to continue the fantastic work that you are doing, inshallah. Ameen. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's uh, Hafiz Hassan Junara from Africa Muslims Agency. Don't forget the pledge 14th of June on Friday, and you can go ahead and pledge towards the projects that are being conducted by AMA from myself for hospital and the rest of the team in Johannesburg. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.